Welcome back, guys. It's good to have you here in person. Um, it's great to be here today. Um, exciting time of the year. Um, it's always super fun. Our players arrive back, um, you know, within the last couple of weeks in phase one, and they're out there working out. And it's fun to feel their energy in the building and the excitement um, that comes with that. Um, number of, of uh, new coaches and feeling that energy has, has been tremendous, um, you know, in general. And then through this, uh, through this free agency and draft class as, as uh, draft preparation as well. Uh, you know, we're here today to talk about the draft and it's, um, it's, a, it's a great draft to have nine picks in. I really do believe that. Um, we're excited for it. Real proud of, uh, of our group and uh, the preparation um, that, that we've uh, kind of taken on and that, that remains, um, you know, fluid. It's ongoing. Uh, a lot of thank yous. Um, I want to thank the uh, college scouting staff led by Tarek Ahmad. Um, they do a tremendous job. I think we're blessed here and, and uh, that has nothing to do uh, with me. I inherited a lot of these guys. We inherited a lot of these guys, but I think we've added to it. Um, we've kind of, uh, you know, we've, we've figured out how we're going to do it, but they're tremendous and, and Tarek's representative of that, the, uh, the amount of visits these guys made. It's a really deep class, you know, with COVID. A lot of guys were afforded the opportunity to come back uh, to school and a lot of guys, uh, kids took that opportunity and so made the, uh, the depth and the numbers really high and uh, our college staff kind of embraced that and had a great plan and executed it with uh, with really hard work. And so I want to commend each and every one of those guys. Um, obviously, when I'm talking about them, I'm talking about Adam Peters, Ethan Wan, Rand Carthon, part of our personnel group, and uh, everybody up there. I also want to thank Kyle and his coaching staff. Um, as you guys know, they play a big part um, in scouting, uh, you know, a lot more so than in other places. Uh, they're very much intertwined. They uh, arrive at uh, you know their, their studies on the on the college players a lot later, um, you know I, I referenced earlier the uh, you know the nine new coaches um, that was really fun to have a, a system in place that that you know we we think runs really well but to, to some new energy and of course you're going to miss the Bobby Turners of the world and his way of seeing things but to bring in an Anthony Lynn and you know a couple of our young. Um, uh, you know, quality control coaches have been on college staff, so their familiarity with some of these kids in college was really, really came in handy throughout this process and will continue to do it. So really good process. Um, you know, that process goes beyond scouting and coaching. Guys like Austin Moss and our player development program, they're integral with meeting the kids and um, really doing deep dives on the character. Anna Gordon, when we need to do deep dives into people's character, um, is, is always tremendous. Our medical staff, I mean, you're talking upwards of, uh, you know, in-depth um, outlooks on over, you know, 450 players and, and their medical conditions, because that's so important. And so it really is a, uh, you know, an effort that takes everyone and uh, couldn't be more proud of our group. Um, I know you guys are here today uh, to talk about uh, the 2022 draft. I also know that everybody, you guys have jobs to do and everyone's very curious about uh, Debo and what's going on there. Um, you know, I, I would ask for your guys' understanding and, uh, you know, a little perspective that, um, you know, I'm not gonna talk about that much today because I don't think that's productive. I don't wanna speak on behalf of Debo and, and his team. And uh, I think it's non-productive. Um, for, for us to be to be talking about things. I've always think I've always thought having been on the other side and I've shared this with you guys, there's a sanctity to those conversations rem uh, remaining private and and that's always how we've operated and we'll continue to do so um, in, in, uh, in this situation. So you know as you guys as we move forward, I'm sure you have questions. just understand please that I'm just not going to go there because I don't think it's uh, I always have to ask myself in this job, you know what's in the best interest of, of our organization. I don't think it's the best uh, interest of, of our organization um, or anyone to uh, to be to be speaking on that. So uh, it's kind of where I'm at on that. But uh, with respect to the draft, um, you know, mentioned um, 
the depth of it. I, I really do believe that it's a it's a quality quality draft. Um, probably not as top heavy as we've seen in some other drafts. Uh, I, I do think um, you know. I think I'm always an optimist, but a, a draft where you have nine picks and the first one is until 61, I think it sets up well for that because there is a there is tremendous depth in this draft, and, and so we can talk about that and a lot of things, and I'll open up for questions there. John, has Debo or his agent requested a trade to you? To you guys? Um, you know, I think you guys have seen the stories and all that. And like I said, Tim, I'm, I'm you know I'm just not going to get into those. Those particulars, because I, I just don't think it's productive. So I'm gonna um, stick to that. You talk about the sanctity of keeping these things private. Well, yeah. clearly, this is no longer private via him. Yeah. Uh, does that bother you? It doesn't bother me. Um, you know, I think we live in a different world where uh, there's a, a number of ways to express yourself, and people are, you know, they're they certainly it's their right to do that. So I think. You know, we pride ourselves for our communication with our players, and um, this this case is no different. Um, and um, you know, I'm confident we can we can find the solutions to work through whatever's going on. Some, some people will say, you know, why not just pay Debo now? And and the, this team's track record is to pay and reward the homegrown stars later in the summers, whether it's Fred, um, whether it's Kittle. Why does the team? like to put those moves off later in the summer when some teams will extend guys now. Yeah, I again, um, Cam, I'm not going to get into the particulars. I, it's I, not about Debo, it's about in general. Yeah, I know it's in general, but I just, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going there, guys. And I'm, I'm, I'm very understanding and, and um, you know, I try to at, at all times help you guys, but I just don't think it's it's in anyone's best interest to get into the particulars. John, you did say I can't ever imagine, you know, wanting to, to move on from Debo. You put yourself through the exercises of, you know, you, even though we don't have a first round pick, you have to be thorough in this process and prepare for everything. And so you, you go through and do that. He's just too good of a player. I mean, you think of 2019, the 36th pick to, to come up with someone like Debo, who, you know, to me, um, has just been a game changing player for our franchise. Um, I told Debo this, I, I think he's the perfect illustration. Herm Edwards used to talk about when will meets skill, um, you've got the opportunity to be special. And I think Debo probably embodies that as much as anyone. He's, uh, he's got tremendous will, he's a very talented player. Um, I think by virtue of the way he plays, it's inspiring. And so to me, that, that um, you know, entails leadership. You know, do you make people around you better? He checks that box. Um, he's a great teammate. And, uh, you know, I think of things like prior to games, I get out there and he's always throwing the ball with the, the fans. I think he's been a great member of our community. So we've got nothing but love for him and nothing but appreciation for what he's bought, but you just don't let guys like that walk. So, um, you know, we, uh, I can't envision a, a scenario where we would. Does the uncertainty of the situation sort of put a cloud in the locker room before the season even starts, given how important he is? I don't think so, you know. I'm, I see guys out there at my window working extremely hard. And, um, you know, it's really early. And, um, you know, guys are focused on getting themselves better. And I, I think that's where their focus should be. And that's that's where it is right now. The situation with Debo, does it at all affect how you are looking at the draft, preparing for the draft? Has it changed anything? No, because, Tracy, we, we, we pride ourselves. And I think if you're doing your job right, you're going to be thorough. Um, and that, that does mean preparing for, for every possible situation. And so um, we do that. And you, you, you do that each and every year. And this, this year is no different. I think that the only difference this year is just the, the volume of players. There's a lot. And so, um, you know, I think talking to my counterparts throughout the league, everyone had their plan of, OK, here's our, here's our draft meeting schedule. But everyone's kind of pushed on because of the, the volume of players. And ours was no different. You know, there were a couple extra days in there, but we allowed for that, thinking that that might be the case. And so that's the only difference this year. But um, we're prepared for, for each and every scenario. Not to get into specifics, but do you believe you've made Debo a fair offer given where the market is right now for wide receivers? Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to get into any specifics and, you know, with, with respect to that. And I explain my reasons why. If have you had contact with Debo at all in the last two, three weeks at all? Has it been? We have. Yeah. You did trade Buckner two years ago. Maybe not in exactly the same situation. 
Yeah. And that was in March, not the week before Jeff or whatever. Um, are there major similarities in these two situations? It does yeah. seem like two contractual situations. Yeah, I, I think two completely different situations. We had different motivations and reasons whether that was a good decision or not. You know, I think people will will always you know um, analyze that, and I think that's still right in its its own script. Um, you know, I didn't take that lightly. Still, probably the hardest thing. I've ever been involved with since I've been here because of everything that DFO stands for, and you know, just proud of him that he's continuing to play the way um, you know that he is. It, we've been left guessing what his issue is, why he's so upset. Are, do you guys have an understanding on what his his grievance is? Yeah. Again, Matt, um, I just uh, I, I'm going to leave those things. Um, I, I'm going to leave those things. I, I do believe in the. the the sanctity, as I, as I mentioned, that those those things remain uh, private. So let, I'm going to stay ask, with that. Let me ask you this then. <laughs> Three months ago, everything yeah. seemed great. I mean, he was yeah. your, your best player. Everything he seemed yeah. content and happy. Now it's it's not that. Are, are you surprised by the the 180 that's going on here? Uh, sure, you know, but uh, you know that's life. You got to work through things, and so that's what we intend on doing. Eric, we've been consistent since we've been here that, you know, we, we listen on um, just about anyone, you know, um, you know, um, that's, uh, that's something we'll always do. So, um, but I just, like I said, I can't ever imagine, you know, moving on from, from Devo. He's been such a great player for us. He means so much to this franchise. Got nothing but love for the guy. Where do things stand with, with Nick Bosa? Yeah, so uh, you guys will see, we, you know, we exercise his fifth year option today. So I think as you come out of here, you'll probably see that. And, uh, you know, I maintain consistently that, um, you know, Nick, uh, in our minds, we're going to do everything we can to keep him a part of this organization. He's a, he's a foundational player, much like Devo, a difference maker. And so, you know, he's just a year out because he was first round pick. And so we, you know, we exercise that fifth year option. and. You know, at the appropriate time, we'll, we'll endeavor to, to, to make that a reality that he's here for a long time. But, uh, you know, it's all good there. Has Alex Mack made a, a final decision on whether or not he's playing in 2023? Not a final. We've been in, uh, we've been in uh, discussions with, with Alex, you know, communicating with him. And, and uh, you know, I, I think I would say, um, common theme here today, I'm not going to speak for Alex on that. I'll, you know, I think at the appropriate time, Alex will, will um, you know, comment on that. Yeah, I do feel good. I mean, we've, we've, uh, you know, and, and that's something with nine picks. I mean, that's an area where we could look to, to bolster, you know, yeah, I think you always, we've had a philosophy. You always want to be strong up front and, uh, you know, you start with Trent Williams out at left tackle. Um, you know, we drafted a couple of young players last year that we're very excited about and they, uh, you know, they're going to have to make the most of their opportunities. Aaron Banks and Jalen Moore, we were, we were very happy with both of them. Um, you know, I know I think a lot of people probably crossed the signals because they weren't playing their rookie year, that that wasn't the case. Just had guys in front of them that were very hard to, to, uh, to beat out. Lakin obviously moved on. And so, um, you know, there's, a, there's an open spot there and a lot of people will compete for it. But I think Banks has a great shot at that. And, uh, you know, Jalen's a, a guy we're really excited about. He's, he's worked his tail off this off season. Danny Brunskill, you know, remains here. And Dan's a hard guy to beat out. You know, he just always, uh, He's, a, he's going to push and he's always going to do what's necessary to hang on. And, uh, you know, because some guys like Brindell and, and Brunskill has versatility to go play center. And then we're really excited about having Mike McGlinchey back as well. You know, Mike's a, a good player and uh, a guy who's meant a lot to us and our success around here. And, uh, you know, watching he and Kinlaw out here kind of become uh, partners in their, their rehab process has been a fun evolution to watch them get better. and, and uh, He's doing really well. We're going to give him the necessary time to be fully help, uh, healthy. And I think um, you know he'll be back to being a big part of who we are. A where do, where do things stand with Jimmy Garoppolo's health, his shoulder, and there's been some talk that you could actually carry his salary 
this yeah. coming year. Jimmy, um, you know, Jimmy is is um, working hard in the in the rehab process. Um, you know, he did his surgery down in in Los Angeles and is doing the rehab down there. Uh, we've been in contact with his representation and you know and, and in communication with him. I think the progress is good. So he's tracking kind of right where we said right you know towards uh, throwing towards the end of uh, of uh, June and and then ramping it up from there. So. You know, that's uh, that's where that's at. Is there a scenario where you see him still on the roster? Absolutely. You know, I said at the owners' meetings, uh, you know, guys like that don't fall out of trees. He's a good player at a at a position where um, you know that they're hard to find, and so um, you know you you certainly don't just give guys like that away. And and we can we can I guess foot the bill if you if you want to describe it as that. And so um, you know we'll be patient with that one. Do you see a scenario where Debo's on the roster opening day? Of course. John, back to, back to Jimmy's shoulder decision, shoulder surgery decision. Was there a trade in the works where he needed to take a physical and that revealed that he needed surgery, or was this? Okay. Never got to that point. There were certainly the various discussions that, that were, you know, different, mm -hmm. different um, um, places in terms of how far along. But um, you know, and that that certainly threw it through a. A wrench in, in those things, but um, you know, like a, you know, you, you adapt and, and and you move forward. And, and like we said, we, we like things that Jimmy's uh, brings to the table, and so um, you know we're doing what we think's best for our team and, and for Jimmy by keeping him with us for right now. Jeff, whether it's Debo or who you're talking about drafting any of that, how, how much do you guys talk internally about making sure that Trey Lance has the, you know the maximum support that he needs to, to have success with? Him? Oh yeah, always as you're putting together your team, as you're putting together, um, you know, your offense. Um, I, I've always spoken to it. I think our coaches have a have a great understanding of of what we covet. You know, the traits that we covet at each each position. But certainly, when you make an investment in a quarterback like we have in Trey, you want to set him up for success. And so we're always talking about that. We're always conscious of that. And we think we've got some. Um, you know, we've, we've got a good roster, you know, and we've got some, you know, for, for George Kittle to, to, to be there for him, Brandon Ayuk, Debo Samuel, uh, Jawan Jennings, all these guys. I mean, those, uh, we, we had Ray Ray McLeod that we really think can be a great fit, not only on special teams, but within our offense. We're excited about these guys and, and uh, we plan on adding to that. A comment, go ahead. If uh, Alex Mack decides to retire, could you expect to, uh, or could you expect a, a rookie center to come in and pick up Kyle's offense to the extent that he could be a 17-game starter? Yeah, you know, I, it's a it's a tough position to come in and play right away. Um, you know, you, you'd be going from one extreme, one of the brighter players in, in terms of football and communication, and Alex Mack and, and experience. I mean, just got a lot of uh, experience uh, to a young player. But sure, that happens a lot, and. Uh, you know, one thing about our system, um, you know, I don't think there's as much on the center in terms of making every protection call and, and, and things of that nature as, as a lot of systems. Alex kind of, you know, we probably afforded him that opportunity because he was so capable, but that doesn't have to be the case. And so there's things we can do, but uh, absolutely. A common critique of your off season so far is that you haven't accomplished your main objectives. You haven't extended Debo, you haven't traded Jimmy, you haven't used the cap space that you could have created by trading Jimmy. And so you're having a, a subpar off season. How would you respond to that criticism? Uh, I think that's that's uh, the noise that's out there. We feel really good about our off season. You know, we took a hard look at our roster and said, where do we need to be better? And we think we've addressed those areas. You know, I think a, a common theme was we wanted to be better holistically on special teams, but we never just want to have special teams players. We want guys that are fits into our offense or defense. And I think Ray Ray McLeod. Uh, is a perfect example of that. Oren Burks is a perfect example of that. A very good special teams player, but also a very capable linebacker who provides depth. I think George Odom is another example, a guy who started meaningful games for the Colts last year and played at what we thought was uh, a really high level at safety. This guy's an all pro special teams player as well. Um, you know, you, you had a guy like Kamoko Ture late. He's got very good rush skills and uh, we feel like can thrive in our system. And, uh, you know, we, we like a lot of what I did. You know, Charvarius Ward 
that was our A number one goal, to add a top flight corner that can match up with the top receivers in this league. And man, I can't tell you how excited we are about Charvarius. And so, you know, I mentioned before, and I think a lot of people see that correlation between the money that Jimmy um, is due uh, and that somehow prohibiting us from doing what we wanted to do. That wasn't the case. We had a plan. Uh, we've been very ag aggressive, you know, top, top, uh, top five, top 10 team in terms of cash. And we've, we've had to pedal down for five years. It was time to probably uh, on the whole, uh, you know, take a step back in terms of the, the amount of cash and, and cap we were spending. And so that was planned all along. And uh, still, I think um, despite those kind of challenges, we were able to have what I believe is a really productive off season. And I'm, I'm, I'm uh, really excited with where our team's at. John, there was a report early in the spring that that trade's been assured he'll, he'll be the starting quarterback. Is, is that true? Yeah. No, I, you know, all these reports, I don't know where they all come from, but, um, you know, we always believe in competition. You know, I think, though, um, at the same time, uh, we, we, we are great believers in what Trey Lance brings to the table. We believe he's ready. Uh, he's going to have to show that. I think he's ready to show that to us, show that to his teammates, and show that to uh, the world. So. We're excited for that opportunity that he has. You guys haven't been shy about uh, moving around in the first round when you've had picks or even moving back into the first round. What, what would a scenario look like this year in which you were to go into the first round and how much have you discussed that possibly? Yeah. You know, because we're so far back, it, you know, it, it takes a lot of our, you know, and I, I think when you start talking about a draft that is so, um, you know, the volume of it is probably the strength, you know, there's a, there's a, um, a good thought just to stay put and, um, and uh, you know, even go back and acquire more picks. But then I think you also got to take into account when you look at our roster, uh, you know, we're already at 76, 77, 78 people, some right around there in terms of what we have right now, there's not a ton of holes as we see it, you know, needs. And so that gives you the flexibility to go up when you really like a player. And so it's something we haven't hesitated to do in the past. And, I think uh, it's going to be different. It's going to be a little boring <laughs> on, uh, on day one. We're not used to that. Um, you know, we're used to having some action, and we'll see. That might happen again. But um, otherwise, we'll kind of sit through and continue to work so that when we get to our pick, whatever that is, we're ready to, to make it the best move for the, uh, for the 49ers. John, reading between the lines, I think that, yeah, that still remains a possibility. He hasn't given us a, you know, he hasn't spoken on it with finality, but, uh, you know, I think it, it does remain for, you know. Who would like the answer, I assume, before you drafted Yeah, and we've been in communication, so, and, and you know, part of that too, I, I would never speak for a player when he got news, you know, so um, not gonna do that. But yes, we will, we will continue to be in communication with Alex. When other players in the locker room see the trouble Debo's having getting an extension, what will they think when it's their turn to get an extension? As a former player, do you put yourself in, the, in their shoes? Yeah, um, you know, I think this is normal. I, I, I don't think um, you know, it's, it's been trouble getting an extension. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of layers to things, and so I wouldn't read too much into that. Um, I think our track record's actually excellent uh, when you look at players. I, you know, every player that's come, I mean, I mean I, the fact that, you know, we've never, had a, a you know a significant holdout since we've been there. I think speaks to that. So uh, we don't plan on doing that moving forward. So um, you know I'm, I'm real proud of our track record there, and our players know that. I think that there's there's really good lines of communication. When you play well here, you're rewarded um, for the most part, and uh, you know we're we're proud of that. And I think that uh, you know it's it's not about words; it's about our actions, and I think our actions have reflected that over time. John, has this been the most trying off season you've had so far since you've gotten here? Uh, you know, I think the, the nature of this job is it's always trying, and I think that's also what makes uh, makes it fun. You know, it's it's why I continue to do it. Um, uh, it's something new every day. I can't say that sometimes those things aren't trying, but um, you know, I kind of I like those challenges, and I I, I like. Uh, the challenge of, of pulling a group together along with Kyle and trying to get the best out of us. And I'm, you know, I'm proud of what we've done. We haven't done enough though, because we haven't won a championship. We've knocked on the door a couple of times 
And so what I'm fueled by is uh, the promise of, you know, finding a way to get a little bit better so that we can take that next step and uh, continue to compete for them, but um, find a way to, to get over that hump. And, and that's what drives me each and every day. So how does the wide receiver market change for top three teams? Who's going to be free agent contracts get handed out or some of that be traded? I mean, has, has that market changed dramatically? I just think you could see it setting up because there were so many good players that, um, you know, that uh, were coming, come and do, that were free or approaching, you know, the, the time that you could talk about their contracts. And I think that bodes well for football. There's a lot of good players at that position right now. They're being featured with the way this league is throwing the ball all over the place. And um, so I think you could see it coming. And I, I think it's been an interesting off season in terms of that. And, um, there's been some movement. There's been some, some guys who have, uh, uh, some really good players, you know, who have, who have done that, and and um, you know, I think uh, that's that's always part of this league. What stands out to you about every more? What stands out to you about this incoming class of wide receivers? This incoming class, I think, um, much like the draft, there's just a lot of volume to the to the class. I, I think, uh, you know, there, and there's a little bit of everything. There's if you like speed, there's some guys who can flat out get. I mean, some of the faster players that have been around for. Um, you know, since I've been doing this, I mean, these, these guys can fly. And their their speed transfers to the football field. Oftentimes you get track guys and it doesn't, isn't necessarily the case. There's some guys, and it's so interesting with the GPS readings we get now, you can, you know, you, you can see it on film, but then it's verified. And so I think there's that. There's, you know, you think of some of the, the top players in the first round, there's some bigger players who, who also move extremely well. So they're slot players that are good players. So I, I do think there's good versatility and there's good depth. And so it, there, there's uh, just a lot of options at the at the wide receiver class in this draft that uh, it makes it a really good class. Yeah. Clarification on uh, Bosa. Um, does picking up the fifth year option uh, change your approach to him and, and the extension? Is that still something that you're working on this off season? And is he here? Yeah. Currently, uh, you know the as to the first part of the question, um, you know the the uh, the fifth year option just means in twenty three. You know we we executed that. You know we can, we can work on a uh, an extension at any time, and uh, we've been in really good communication with Brian Arrow, uh, Nick's representation, and at the appropriate time we'll take those next steps. Um, Nick is not here right now, but it has nothing to do with contract. Uh, he and Kyle communicated, and, and he's working out back in Florida. He and his brother have have their trainer, and believe me, Nick Bose is working. <laughs> you know, you, uh, he he shows that each and every time he shows up, that he's in elite shape. So the past few uh, years, the past few years, you Kyle, Kyle joined you, uh, you know, for this session. Yeah. Did you invite him? <laughs> <laughs> He's always invited. Uh, he's always invited. You know, last year just kind of on a whim, he, he I think he uh, he wanted to have some fun, so uh, he came and joined me. But uh, um, I just left him, and uh, he was actually, um, you know, we were we were studying some different scenarios in, in uh, at uh, 61. So that's what we were doing when I last left him, and I think he was he was too engrossed in that, so uh, he, he got stuck with me. <laughs> what is your attendance wow, like for OTAs here? And in the past, yeah. it seems like you've had nearly 100% yeah, attendance. Yeah, really, really good. Uh, we're up over 90%, but uh, phase two starts Monday of next week, and we'll get pretty much the remainder of guys that aren't here uh, back. So we'll be close to 100% come phase two. Phase two, the coaches get out on the fields with our guys, but uh, our attendance is really good right now. Um, and. Uh, speaks to the job I think our health and performance staff guys like training here have a lot of resources for those guys and so they like being a part of the program and then uh, phase two we'll get some more back so real, real happy about that all right thanks Doc. all right thank you, thank you. All right.